But first, let's talk strategy on this show. We need to address the recent surge in bunting. Now, people think I hate bunting just because I wear a shirt that says stop bunting. I realize that confuses people. When we were doing MLB Now in 1909, Joel, you were there. <laughs> we did a part of the show called Ye Oldie Bunts of the Day. But then they introduced the new ball. Oh, now we're over here. Oh, now we're back over here. They introduced the new baseball, home runs were flying out over the wall, and we stopped doing that. Let's do a little digging in. I know we all love bunting. The Diamondbacks bunted three times in game two of this World Series. Three times, three sacrifice bunts in a single game. Do you know how often teams sack bunt these days? The last two years have been an all-time low. This year, teams bunted .09 times per team per game, .09. That means a club sack bunts on average once every 10 games. It's extremely rare. In the 50s and even some years in the 70s, teams bunted four to five times more often. Here's the basic reason why. Now keep in mind, this is on the by and large. We're not talking specifically or in the playoffs. Leadoff man gets on, a club on average scores 0.9 runs. A club successfully bunts, right, gets the runner to second with one out, you have reduced your average run total to 0.7. Also, your chances of scoring even one run goes from 43 to 40.5%. But again, that is on the by and large. But here's a good example. Everyone seems to love Evan Longoria bunting on his own third inning of game two. Alec Thomas had a leadoff single. Longoria made his own call, evidently. Sack bunted Thomas to second. Maybe he was looking for a hit. Yeah, what great fun. Except that Geraldo Perdomo grounded out. Cattell Marte flew out. Corbin Carroll, the team's best hitter, didn't bat. There were three outs. Everyone loves that Longoria bunted. I'm benching him. Now, is there one instance where bunting actually does increase your odds? Yes. And in that situation, I'm not actually you know, benching him, but in that situation, the Diamondbacks opened their bunt fest in game one. It was first and second, no outs in the third inning. Third inning. But on top of that, it was the bottom of the order setting up the top of the order. Ideally, you do want a weak hitter giving up the out, setting up a better run scoring situation for your best hitters. In this case, let's dig into this. You have Geraldo Perdomo in the nine spot. By the way, he's not helpless at the plate. He's got a 353 on base. That's good. But he has a 96 OPS plus. That means he's just below league average on the whole. 100 is league average. See the bottom number OPS plus. Perdomo is bunting for a guys with an OPS plus of 134 and 128. Corbin Carroll, Cattell Marte. I realize that's a simplification, but it illustrates what you're doing. Those guys are better hitters. Notice I only list two guys. There's already one out. Third guy, third guy might not hit. Now that I've said that, how about realize, let's move it along, realize Corbin Carroll did get up with second and third with one out, and he shot a triple to left center. So everyone watching thought, hey, the bunt worked. Except by that logic, Carroll's triple would have scored anybody everywhere. A triple clears the bases. They would have scored anyway. But okay, everyone thinks it worked. Arizona gets three runs that inning. Maybe if they don't give Nathan Eovaldi an out, they get more. So yeah, game two, three sack bunts. And as we examine this in the light of day for Arizona in that game two, they had 16 hits. They struck out only two times the whole game. For a team putting the ball in place so much and so successfully, I think they might want to take their chances just swinging the bat. I want to end with this. Joel is looking at me askance. The baseball culture, we say they love home runs. No, 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 they love bunting. They've always loved bunting. It goes back to Ty Cobb saying that Babe Ruth was ruining the game. It wasn't real baseball. Ruth won that war, of course. The live ball era, think about this, began in 1920. That's when teams began to adopt the modern style of play, hitting home runs and walking. Babe Ruth baseball. Do you know when the live ball itself was introduced? 1911. Nine years earlier. It takes us a while to adapt. It took many teams years to try to catch up to Ruth Gehrig and the Yankees hitting home runs. Move up to today. What environment are we seeing? 2023 had one of the highest home run rates in history. Much bigger than Ruth and Gehrig in the 20s. Fourth highest ever for a full season. It's a home run era. Home runs win. This year in the regular season, the Diamondbacks, I'll admit, they're 17th in slugging, 22nd in home runs out of 30 clubs. Texas is third and third. Texas has the most home runs of any team in this postseason, 25. But you know what? Arizona has 20. They're not the little sisters of the poor. They're within 35 points of Texas and slugging in the postseason. So yeah, they're built on contact speed and defense, but that doesn't mean you have to give the Rangers outs. They are good enough to play them and beat them straight up. 